and welcome back to Everard Junction. As you can see, I've been quite busy over the last month or so, building perhaps the biggest scratch-built building I've ever constructed, this high-rise apartment block or block of flats. This is something I've wanted to create on the layout for a long, long time, and the layout has always been designed with buildings like this in mind, with plenty of room behind the tracks just there to fit large buildings such as these big prefab monstrosities. So today we're going to focus on the construction of this building and before we go any further I would just hasten to add that it is not finished, it does not have any roof detail, it does not look lived in, it's missing curtains, it's missing lighting, it's missing washing on the balconies, it's missing figures, it's missing weathering, it's missing TV aerials and various other important details. But I like to call this the bare bones, the actual structure has been constructed. You know, it's ready for residents to move into it, but there's a lot of detail work left to add. So bear that in mind, there will be another video coming on this structure where we enhance the detail that's already there. The focus of this video is the basic construction of the shell and then the cladding that goes on the outside of the building. I've also been hard at work on the scrapyard and the content for that will be in a future video. I've not quite finished yet, still plenty to do, but you can see there's a number of other details and bits and pieces in the scrapyard and all of that has been filmed and we'll focus that uh, endeavor in a later video. For now, we're just gonna focus on this block of flats. It's taken many hours to get this far, but I am very pleased with it. As I've said, it does need quite a bit more work, you know, personalize it, make it look lived in, give it that weathered appearance to blend it into the rest of the layout. It's very pristine and squeaky clean at the moment, so that will all be addressed. But let's delve into the construction of this, how I went about it. It's certainly not perfect. It has a few rough edges. It's the first time I've ever attempted a building on this scale. So I learn a few things in the process and uh, I'd certainly approach the project perhaps a little bit differently in the future. But uh, for a first go on a big building like this, I'm quite pleased. So we will focus on the construction and we'll detail it in a future video. To build this block of flats, I shall be using this machine. This is called a Cricut Maker. I've had it for over a year now and I use it to help me make all of the various buildings that I've constructed up until this point for the new layout. Previously, I used to sit there with a steel rule and a blade and cut everything out manually, and it takes a very long time. So I've had this machine for about a year, and it's been very useful for my scratch builds. It does cost a bit of money. I think it costs somewhere around 300 pounds when I purchased it over a year ago, and I bought mine from Hobbycraft. Uh, Hobbycraft is a craft store in the UK. They sell these machines, and they also sell uh, the various materials in the correct sizes to go into the machine and uh, be used to make various things. In my case, buildings for the model railway. Inside, it's quite simple. It's basically a little bit like an inkjet printer. You have this head, which takes various tools. You simply remove the tools. So for example, this one here, this is a knife blade. And what this allows me to do is you put it in the machine, draw up a design on the machine, put a sheet of plastic card in there, and it will then cut out whatever I've drawn out on the computer. It saves a lot of time, and it's much more precise than, say, me trying to do it with a blade and a steel rule over multiple evenings. You know, you imagine trying to cut out a 20 mil by 20 mil square in embossed brick plastic card, and you need to do it 140 times before you can put those parts onto your model. That's gonna take you ages, and are you gonna get them absolutely right every time? No, of course not. There's always gonna be a margin for error. So basically I'm using this machine to cheat and to speed things up. So all my buildings start out like this. This is two millimeter art board. It's basically just a dense cardboard, you know, a high quality cardboard. And uh, you place that onto a, what the cricket call a cutting mat. And uh, then that goes in and out of the machine and this moves around and it cuts out whatever you've drawn on the computer. Uh, you pull it out, press out the parts, hey presto, you've got yourself you know, the uh, side of a building with all the windows and doors cut out for you. So here we are in the early stages of the construction for this block of flats or apartments. I'm going for a 1960s build so we're looking for that prefabricated 
brutalist architecture. So over the years I've looked at lots of photographs of these types of buildings and indeed looked at some of the buildings in my local area. They vary enormously in design and style. So I've done a lot of measuring and drawing out and come up with a design that I think is going to be interesting, suitably large and imposing, and also it is busy enough. You can see we've got, uh, we've got seven floors. Um, so that's the idea, trying to make a, a big, busy structure while still trying to stay in the realms of something that is to scale. So if we take a look here, to make sure I'm getting the scale about right, there is two double O scale figures. Now if we imagine they're stood on the floor, the floor being pre-stressed concrete running along the top of each window, and we look dead side on, you can see that there is sufficient room above the head of the figure to create a convincing sort of space, if you like, for a, an apartment or a flat. You can see this figure here holding her hand above her head. If this was in real life, she would just about be able to touch the ceiling in that pose, which I think is about right for a sort of cramped apartment building. None of this is seen once the building is completed, as it's clad with plastic card and various other materials and painted accordingly, but it provides the underlying structure that holds everything together. Okay, so we're starting to glue the first couple of pieces together, and there is a figure for scale. Um, he's standing in uh, what would be the doorway out onto the balcony, the balcony occupying the, uh, the recess in the building here, and then I've designed it in such a way that the end wall sticks past the balcony like that, you end up with this sort of little section. That design feature is taken from a real tower block and then the balconies themselves that's taken from another one. Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at tower blocks and features I like I'm pinching and incorporating into this single building. So it basically we're going to end up with a sort of monster of various features from multiple apartment blocks. I'm using rocket card glue, it's quick and it's easy and it uh, bonds this cardboard together with quite a bit of strength. Uh, so over here we have the left hand side of the building and you can see there are some windows in that uh, wall there. I did experiment with some small windows here as well but I decided against that so that will get covered up. We've got the first sort of block there. Got another block here which I've made to uh, sort of protrude from the building. I've made the wall at that far end stick out to match where this face is sitting. We've then got another section here with the wall protruding as well. It's difficult to see at the moment with it in such a sort of basic state, but uh, you can see there's a lot of relief and changes going on. Some bits stick out, some bits don't, and the overall effect is uh, quite a monster. So I've got the building split in two halves at the moment just to make things easier to work on and now what I'm going to start doing is working on some of the uh, structure and the flooring that goes behind uh, the building and that will square all of this off and make sure you know that this is straight and this bit is at 90 degrees and so on. Give the building a lot of strength and then it's much easier to handle and continue working and uh, we'll also do start, start doing the balconies. So we've got balconies running down there, down there and down here I need to do the uh, the end of the building, this wall that goes there and uh, that should look quite nice. Okay, there we go. Well, could have quite easily cut that with a knife, but got the machine, might as well use it. Uh, it does like to do a lot of passes, and I find this is unnecessary, so I tend to pause it about halfway through its cutting process, and it's basically all it's doing after about 13 or so passes is just cutting into the cutting mat. So that's those two pieces cut, and I will use the rest of this to make the balconies. Okay, so here we are at the rear of the building, and obviously this is all quite flimsy, but with the addition of a floor, 
and some glue obviously bring that to there that's going to really tie this building together with multiple floors running up the length of the building so I'll get some more of those cut out and uh, we'll get those glued in with regards to the interior what I can then do is say let's imagine this is an interior flat piece with obviously all of the furniture carpet I can put walls and all sorts on there cut it to the shape of this but you can just slide the interior into position which makes making them an awful lot easier okay so while we're waiting for the balconies to be cut out we're just moving on we're doing a few more bits and pieces so you can see here I've thickened the uh, edge of the building with a few strips I've done the same uh, for all the major support columns where the building changes in its level of relief these should be ready shortly it just saves an awful lot of time I can carry on building and coming up with ideas and designs for the next parts whilst these are being made otherwise I'll have to sit there for 10-15 minutes cut all those out okay so starting to work on the balconies you can see the idea there and uh, like I say nice precision cut they're all the same so everything goes together really nicely and here you can see from inside sort of structure of the building I haven't put all the floors in yet that's a, a separate job there you have a figure for some perspective the floors in this particular building leave uh, spaces between them of 28mm and scaled up 28mm is just over 2.1 metres which is 100mm over the UK minimum height for ceilings so struck lucky there the uh, size I went for is within the regulations so if you look above his head you can see that balcony piece there that is the position for the next floor so you can see there's reasonable headroom and if there was to be a light fitting in this room he wouldn't smack his head as he walks in and out okay so here we have the setup for putting the floors in just made these out of some offcuts these are 28 millimeters tall which is the separation I'm after for between each floor and it's simply just uh, take the cut pieces and install them something like that obviously a bead of rocket car to do around the edge I've just brought the model outside and just given it a quick prime with some uh, Hornby aerosol primer it's just that humble grey stuff that they've been making for years uh, use the whole can just to do this one building so it does take quite a lot of material although you won't see any of this underlying structure it's important to prime it just so it you know it's cardboard at the end of the day so it will draw in a bit of moisture over the years and you know it might have a tendency to become misshapen you know think of uh, you know like uh, the old metcalf kits if you built one of those you know 20 years ago and kept it in the loft chances are it's not uh, it's not exactly straight and true anymore so this is just to try and keep the building to hold its shape although it is incredibly strong with all of these multiple layers of card it's still made of card so you need to take into account a bit of moisture protection while that dries i'll go ahead and start measuring up some of the brick and bits and pieces at the end of the day what you see here will be covered uh, with brick and concrete and stuff like that and uh, this is this is purely just to give the building its you know its base and its strength <laughs> Okay, so I've done quite a bit of experimentation and now we're starting to cut out some windows. I've made windows before but usually it's very thin plastic card. I'm using something a bit thicker this time so that I get a proper sort of sized window that looks in proportion. There's been a number of failures and rejects but I've got the machine dialed to a point where it seems to be behaving and you can see many windows are now ready to go into the building. Obviously you can appreciate if I got these custom made or if I found a size off the shelf it would have been relatively expensive. So to be able to make my own windows in house is uh, very powerful indeed. I can now make just about any building I can think of. As you can see it's cutting through the majority of the card with just a little bit of uh, teasing and additional cutting of the knife from me just to get all of the panes out 
and expose the window frames. But I'm quite pleased with that. The plastic card I'm using is uh, about three quarters of a millimetre thick, so it's got uh, a decent bit of uh, sturdiness to it. And once that's uh, got a clear sheet of plastic glue behind it, it'll hold its shape quite nicely. There we go, another batch of windows ready to go. I'm doing them in rows, uh, just single rows, just in case anything goes wrong. It also gives me a chance to clean the tool, because as you can see, you get a lot of uh, plastic building up on the edge of that. Okay, I've just painted all of these brick parts, and there's various other brick parts that are in the process of being painted. And now is the turn of the windows. These are already the correct colour, but they are just plastic, so they've got that sort of plasticky look to them, that plastic sheen. So I'm just going to quickly do those in some Rail Match white primer, and that'll just give them a nice matte finish, and then they're ready to have the glazing fitted. Okay, this uh, brick paint has now dried. This is a, uh, a mix that I've come up with myself. I wanted something just a little bit lighter than some of the normal brick shades you can buy off the shelf. So I've just uh, added a splash of orange in there to try and bring a bit of vibrance to the brick. So the next thing to do is the mortar wash, and this is arguably one of the most important things that you can do to some brickwork. It really brings it to life. So at the moment, this is painted in enamel paint, and it's now dried. What I've done here is mix up some acrylic paint to use as my mortar wash. And the reason I'm using acrylic is when I go to wipe off the excess with acrylic thinner, it's less likely to uh, encourage or damage um, the brick colour here uh, to lift off of the plastic. I've also primed um, all of these as a precaution, so hopefully that brick paint has uh, stuck uh, well to that surface. And then, as I say, just go over it with a bit of the uh, a bit of the mortar wash, and you make sure it's quite thin but not so thin that uh, you know it just washes out completely. So what we do is we paint that, that whole section and then just leave that to dry, leave it to settle. And we'll come back and we'll remove the excess paint that is sitting on the surface of the bricks and we should get a nice mortar finish. Okay, so I've washed the uh, mortar on all of them, except for this one. So you, you can see how the, uh, the mortar wash is a little bit too intense. So to remove it, you just take one of these, a little bit of uh, thinner, just a small amount, and then just gently remove the excess acrylic paint and the enamel brick paint underneath will begin to show through. And there you have it. Leave that to dry and it's ready to be installed on the building. A lot easier to do this with the pieces in kit form like this before you actually fix it all in place. Uh, if you have it where it's uh, glued all together and you've got corners and things, getting into those corners without damaging the brick paint can be quite difficult. So I like to do it before I've fitted all of the parts together. So with most of the brick sections now completed, moved on to the windows, and that's simply a case of just gluing the window frames to this uh, clear piece of plastic. And for that, I'm just using some deluxe materials glue and glaze. And the advantage with using glue and glaze is unlike um, some other uh, super glues and things like that, is they don't fog the plastic or make any marks or anything like that. It dries crystal clear. So even if you were to get a bit of excess glue over the edge of one of the window frames, it dries clear. So it's not gonna be all that noticeable once the completed window is installed. I've also completed a series of white plastic strips and I have just gone over those with a white primer just to take that plasticky sheen off them. And these will form the concrete pillars that are actually the building skeleton. So I've started mocking up some of the pieces and to fix all of this to the building, I'm just using a small amount of super glue and that does allow pieces to be removed if I make a mistake. 
but uh, very pleased that I've managed to get the hang of using that uh, Cricut cutting machine. You can see the precision. It just everything just sort of fits together as it should. I do have to shave one or two bits down here and there very minutely with a sharp blade, but for the most part everything wants to fit in place and I'm really pleased that I've managed to get that real fineness in the window frames. Incidentally I've gone for an English Bond brick. It may not be entirely uh, correct for a building like this, but I, I like the style of the English Bond bricked, uh, brick. I've used a lot of Flemish Bond on the layout and a fair bit of overlap brick. Uh, it's just something a bit different. Maybe the architect, you know, he, he insisted on English Bond brick to give the building a bit of a feature. Who knows? Ignore the finger marks on the glazing, that's obviously from me installing the windows. Uh, they're just pushed in at the moment, I've not yet glued them, but that can be easily cleaned off later with a rag. So I'm going to go ahead and continue assembling the various parts I've made so far. It will not complete the building, I still have a lot left to do, but it's going to get us quite far and it will get all of this section uh, cosmetically finished on the outside. Um, and then I've got to worry about some of the uh, adjoining pieces such as here and start finishing off the balcony sections. So many hours have passed since the last clip and I've made a fair bit of progress. You can see quite a lot of the, uh, the sort of off-white uh, structural supports are going into place. Not finished yet, there's a bit of filler and things to add just to finish off some of the edges. A lot of the windows are now assembled, they are just loosely in position just to give an idea of how the building will look. And I've also started doing the white trim around the balconies to show the edge of the floor, the way it sort of continues out. Again, a little bit of filler work required here and there. There's a good example on that corner just there. That just needs a little blob of filler just to round it off. And you'll also notice that I've cut, painted and glued in the slightly differing brick sections for the balconies. Obviously the balconies uh, walling is yet to be completed, but you get the picture. So there's still a long way to go. The next job is to do the windows and doors for the balconies, do the walls for the edge of the balconies so people don't fall off, and then uh, we'll actually start working on how the ground floor of the building is going to look. That's why I've left all of these pieces long. And then we'll start working on the top of the building, finishing that edge off. Okay, here are some of the sections for the balconies under construction. It'll make more sense when I actually put it together, but I'm uh, looking forward to the effect that that's going to give to the building. Here are some of the doors. They've been primed and painted. Decided to go for a sort of off yellow, a bit of contrast to the overall sort of brick and cream finish of the building. And for the yellow, I've used Vallejo German yellow. It's a nice sort of neutral, sort of unoffensive colour. And certainly seen a few tower blocks with panels of this sort of colour. And here we're just gluing some of those down onto some clear plastic to glaze them. And you can see the effect of having the white window door frame with the contrasting yellow door. 
just a bit of, bit of a different effect would have looked a bit boring if it was all white. So I've done a couple of those doors just separate and they are painted on both sides and glazed in the actual frame. A bit fiddly cutting out the piece of clear plastic to go in there but uh, certainly possible. And that's just so we can have a couple of open doors on the balcony and give a bit of variation. And certainly in the future I may revisit some of these windows, see if we can't work out a way of uh, getting some of them to be in the open position after all the layout is modelled during the summertime. I've installed the windows and the doors in the balconies and obviously this one for example will house one of the doors that is open. So I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. Again they're just a push fit, nothing's actually been glued in place there. It's coming along. There are one or two, you know, rough edges. You know, this is my first attempt. Nothing's perfect, so you've got something like that. But I hope to uh, get rid of that when I install the balcony and obviously a little bit of uh, filler once we're finished. We'll certainly hide a few sims. I've gone for the same sort of mustard, unoffensive yellow. I did originally plan on continuing the brick along here, making the balcony walls, you know, brick as well, but. Uh, Although that's certainly the case in a lot of the real things, I wanted to try and portray a little bit of that uh, coloured panelling that some of these buildings had. And although I haven't seen it quite so much on brick versions, I thought, well, it, it just needed somebody to break it up. It, it would have looked particularly dull. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. We'll obviously have a small section on the ends just there as well. We'll get that cut out on the machine a little bit later. That'll just be uh, the sort of white cream finish uh, to match the rest of the building's pre-stressed concrete and all of that will receive uh, a weathering treatment and a subsequent paint. It's all primed but uh, certainly when the building was new it would have looked very white and very fresh but even by the time period the layout's set it would have looked you know 20 years older so it's got to look a little bit more weathered and I have experimented a little bit you can see these are a bit duller. Uh, so plenty of work left to do but in the meantime what I'll do is I'll get the rest of these uh, balcony walls installed and you can see the brick as well just finishing off that area there's the grey card just in primer and then there we have the brickwork working down but you can also see one of these open doors so I'll keep going got a long way to go and I'm just working on little bits and pieces and touch up and trying to make the building look as good as possible but at the end of the day it is a first attempt so there will be a few errors you can see I'm doing a bit of touch up uh, down on this bit here that's fine we'll get that sorted out but uh, for the most part I'm pleased it's an ambitious project but it is headed in the right direction so I will glue the rest of these balconies and open doors into position and I think that's really going to break things up so a few hours later and the balconies are starting to take shape Next thing to do is to add the uh, wall for the edge of these ones, but I'm quite pleased with the way they sort of stagger. Sort of decided perhaps we'll try that when I was designing the building. And it certainly looks more interesting than if it was just flat. Okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit. Most of the balconies are now completed. They do need a little bit of subtle filing and trimming and adjusting here and there, but they are pretty much installed, the, the basics are done anyway. I've also finished the trim around the top of the building, just a mixture of different plastic hard again as per all the other bits and pieces and it will get subject to the relevant painting once I'm finished, it's all currently in white primer. I'm not exactly sure how weathered I want it so I've left it in white primer for the moment and will prefer to do those effects with them on the finished building. So moving down to the ground floor of the building, there's still quite a bit of work to do, but I have completed the relevant card work to get the building sat up and stood on its own without any additional support. I've gone for a fairly typical design which uh, is slightly recessed from the rest of the flats, so you can see how the columns stick out over the edge of that wall. That's quite a common feature on the British prefab flats and I'm just in the process of reinforcing and uh, making those columns three-dimensional. You can see I've done a couple of them and then there's a few such as these ones that need quite a bit of work. Nothing too fancy in terms of design, going to keep it fairly bland as per the real things. So we've got a small side door there, a bit of a bigger entrance over there and a couple of sort of basic utility room style windows. 
Okay, so a few more days have passed and I have completed the various bits of brickwork. I've designed up and cut out some windows. There's still a few bits and pieces to do. You can see there's a join in the brickwork there. Didn't have a section long enough, but I'll be able to cover that up with a piece of detail or something. But for the most part, that's all that installed. So we've still got the sides of the building to do. I've also just gone over it very carefully with a little bit of model filler, only a very minute quantity, just to fill in any of the major imperfections and areas where I've messed up slightly. But uh, for the most part, I'm quite pleased with how it's looking. It's just a little bit of that white filler just to tidy up anywhere where some parts don't quite fit properly or I've got a few gaps. Okay, we've made some more progress and finally got the brickwork and concrete and windows on the far side of the building and I've also done that on the other side. Simple process, exactly the same as everything else I've done here. Windows are a slightly different size and style, just to keep things looking a bit varied. And of course it's all primed, painted off of the model and then glued into position. And then here at this end of the building you can see it's broadly the same thing. It's just uh, not quite as deep as it is on the other side as the building is a bit narrower at this end. Okay, so there we have it, loosely placed into position on the layout. Its final position may differ slightly, it's just laid in place at the moment. And of course I need to construct a board for it to sit on and all of the relevant detail and scenery needs to be added to that. And we'll complete the retaining wall detail for the wall on the far side of the layout that meets the building just there. But uh, quite pleased with that, that's the massive sort of imposing style I was going for. A real sort of uh, head turner on the layout and I hope to complement it with numerous other buildings in similar size. Okay, well there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Certainly took quite a long time to put this one together. A lot of work put into that building. I'd say something approaching the region of 70 hours or so. So I'm gonna take a break from that block of flats, although it needs quite a bit more work in terms of the detail and the weathering. I'll have a break. I'll leave it sitting there for the time being and I'll move on to something else. 
and when I feel more into it, I'll come back and approach it and uh, you know, complete the, uh, the rest of the works uh, that is required for such a building. I've got a few other scratch builds in mind for a few other places on the layout, so those will be popping up hopefully around Christmas time. But uh, all that remains for me to say is I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be back as always with the next one as soon as I've made enough progress on whatever it is I'm working on next. Just quickly before I go, most of the model railway exhibitions this year are being held virtually. We've seen that with the likes of the Great Electric Train Show and a few others. The Wardley Model Railway Show is no different and the club have asked me to let you know that this year they will be holding the show virtually and that will be taking place on their YouTube channel. So there's a link in the video description and the Wardley Show will be happening virtually over the normal weekend that the real exhibition would typically take place. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.